What makes a quality shirt? If you've done your research, it's probably some combination of these. Sure, the finer details are nice to have, but have you ever wondered which ones are truly essential? Because chances are you might not always fully appreciate or feel that the extra details are worth paying a premium for. But you want a baseline level of quality, which is totally fair. Not everyone needs the most expensive artisanal shirts. What? So in this video, we'll explore how each detail contributes to a shirt's aesthetic and functional quality and why you might not always need them. All right, let's start with pattern matching. This doesn't really apply to solid colored shirts, but on a stripe, checked, or any other pattern shirt, ideally you'd want the patterns to align at the shoulder seam, calf placket, and chest pocket, if any, and yoke, if it's a split yoke. When they are aligned, the shirt will look that much more harmonious. But I think whether you should value this detail depends on the type of pattern and how you'll be wearing it. On a large scale pattern, any misalignment is more obvious so pattern matching is more important. On the other hand, it's less important on micro patterns as misalignments are less obvious. Also, if you're always layering your shirts under a jacket, the pattern matching or lack thereof won't really matter. Personally, my pattern shirts are mostly casual and are often worn without a jacket. So pattern matching is essential for me. Next, the stitch density. On heavier weight or loosely woven fabrics, a higher stitch density may damage the fabric but for most shirt fabrics, it results in a stronger seam. Anything above 18 SPI is considered good quality but from a durability standpoint, I'd argue that a higher stitch density doesn't translate to a proportionally higher quality shirt. At least from my experience, most wear and tear happens on the elbows and collar. In other words, it's the fabric rather than any particular seam ripping apart, regardless of stitch density. I will concede that from an aesthetic point of view, a higher stitch density makes the seam more discreet and elegant, which is desirable on a dress shirt. Still, it's not something as obvious as pattern matching, so it's not something that I'll sweat over. Another indicator of quality is the single needle stitch. Compared to double needle stitching, single needle stitching creates a stronger, cleaner looking and more comfortable seam. But again, we are rarely going to tear a seam, so I'd argue that this detail is more for aesthetics and comfort. In terms of aesthetics, double needle stitching can sometimes look good on rugged fabrics, but most of the time single needle stitching looks best on dress shirts. Even if you're like me and aren't particular about the seams and you simply want the most comfortable shirt possible, then the single needle stitch is still the preferred option. Speaking of stitches, edge stitching, which are sewn on the edges of collars and cuffs. They are a more refined way to finish a shirt and they do add a bit more elegance and flair to it. Still, you've got to remember that the shirt's elegance is largely determined by 1. The fit, which is a separate topic on its own, and 2. The appropriate stiffness of the collar, which is determined by the collar interlining or lack thereof, and less to do with whether a collar has edge stitching or not. To me, edge stitching is more of a style preference than a sign of quality. Next, on the shirt sleeve, you can check whether the sleeve seam is aligned with the side seam. If they are aligned, this means that the sleeve and side seams are sewn at the same time along the same seam line. This is a faster and cheaper way to manufacture shirts and doesn't take into consideration your sleeve pitch. For those who don't know, the sleeve pitch is the angle of which the sleeve is attached to the shirt. In a well-fitted shirt, the sleeve pitch should follow the natural angles of your arms at rest, resulting in a cleaner sleeve line. But by accounting for this angle, the seams will often be misaligned and this detail is often found in bespoke shirts, sometimes in made-to-measure and almost never in ready-to-wear. Whether you find this detail essential depends on how picky you are with it. Personally, I wouldn't pay more for this detail on a made-to-measure or ready-to-wear shirt. On a formal shirt, I'll always wear a jacket over it so the sleeves are hidden. And on a casual shirt worn by itself, I'll often roll up the sleeves so the imperfect fit becomes less pronounced. Another detail you can find on high-end shirts is the hand rope hem. Now, is it a beautiful detail? Yes, but literally no one will ever know and the only time you can see and appreciate its craftsmanship is at the start of the day, the end of the day, and when you're peeing. So, is it essential in a quality shirt? I think not. Likewise for gussets, which is there to reinforce the side seams. But again, you are unlikely to tear your side seams and if you've reached a point where you're at the risk of tearing the seam, then the shirt is already too tight and you'd best focus on getting a better fitting shirt or working on your physique and not some non-essential detail that is the gusset. Next, the split yoke, which refers to the two back panels running across the shoulders. Most shirts have a one-piece yoke, but on many bespoke shirts, the yoke is split into two to account for uneven shoulder sloping. If you are going bespoke, then I'd say the split yoke is essential, since achieving a superior fit is one of the main reasons for going bespoke. But if it's on a made-to-measure or ready-to-wear shirt, a split yoke is debatable since most makers would simply cut the yoke into two without accounting for uneven shoulders. Also, on a solid colored shirt, the extra seam can be distracting. However, it can look good on a striped or pattern shirt, but I don't find it necessary. Now, because the fabric on a split yoke is often slanted, many people claim that it's more comfortable. This is because when woven fabrics are pulled along the vertical
vertical warp grain or horizontally along the weft grain, it doesn't stretch. However, when the fabric is put diagonally on the bias grain, most fabrics will have a natural stretch and therefore the yoke is cut on the bias for greater mobility. But in reality, if you are at the point where you need a split yoke for that little bit of stretch, then your shirt is already too tight and you should consider getting shoulder pleats or a better fitting shirt in the first place before obsessing over the yoke. So no, I don't think a split yoke is essential, at least on a made to measure or ready to wear shirt. Last but not least, the button related stuff. That means mother of pearl buttons, button shanks, and hands-on buttonholes. I know every shirt connoisseur will preach about the durability of mother of pearl, but I've literally never had any of my plastic buttons crack. What I will give them is that the luster of mother of pearl truly elevates the look of the shirt. And that alone, in my opinion, makes them a must-have detail, at least for my dress shirts. Next, button shanks are a more secure way of attaching buttons and make for easier buttons buttoning action, but I don't find them necessary. Two reasons. First, if a button ever drops off, I can always reattach it. It takes less than 5 minutes to do it and you can learn how to do it here, link in description. Second, in my experience, the ease of buttoning a button has more to do with how thin it is and the size of the buttonhole, rather than the presence of a shank. Lastly, the hands-on buttonhole, perhaps one of the greatest pleasures of high-end shirt making. It's a thing of beauty and makes a shirt even more of a joy to wear. But machine-made buttonholes can also be executed to a high standard, which is enough for most people. So no, you don't need hands-on buttonholes. And there you have it. These are my must-have details and these are my nice-to-haves. Obviously, the more you pay for a shirt, the more details you deem to be essential. But for those of you shopping for your first shirt or are budget conscious, you are often better off with the bare minimum. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this, dislike if you disagree, but also let me know in the comments why. Until next time, stay subtle.